Shalom, shalom. Hallelujah, Yahuwah. Father, for this peace-filled Shabbat, Yahuwah, we thank you, Father, that you have given us all things for life and for righteousness. Yahuwah, show us. Cause us to hear, cause us to see, cause our hearts to turn and repent. Father, that we might be of the chosen that are not led astray by whatever is false. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Yahuwah. Hmm. Praise Yahuwah. Okay, I want to take a look today at just these couple of verses and most of us know Matthew 24 end times all this business but there's these two verses in here <sighs> and the whole the whole point is that the elect the chosen have been forewarned that they would be led astray like everyone else if that were possible and so recently we've seen something out there that says that the delusion is so strong that even the elect are going to be deceived. And I could say, Abraham, Yitzhak, Yaakov, Moshe, Yeshiyahu, Yeremiahu, Yehezkel, Hosea, Daniel. I could say all kinds of names and stop there. Not that no one ever sinned. But they were not led astray with the ways of the wicked one. They, Dahuid, Dahud, okay? Come on. Let's take a look at this. And let's see just where these words go in Hebrew. And not where they just sit in the Greek. For the most part, we're going to take them back to the Hebrew. Matthew 24, verses 24 to 25. For false messiahs and false prophets shall arise. They are everywhere. Here's the messiah. There's the messiah. This is the messiah. This is what he looks like. That's what he looks like. And false prophets. Prophets plant a seed. What kind of seed is being planted? They shall arise and shall show great signs and wonders. So as to lead astray, if possible even the chosen ones. See, I have forewarned you. I just think about his taught ones he was speaking about. Were they led astray? I mean, did Peter sin? Okay, got it. But were all in all they led astray with the delusion of everyone else that crucified him? And how about today? Come on. All right. So we're really going to take a the look at the word possible, but I want to open up here the E sword. I want to take a look here at um, in so much that that is the word there. Okay, from fifty six thirteen. Oh, that's cutting off the screen, isn't it? Well, let's move it over. 56.13, probably, probably, we don't even know for sure, but probably an adverb of a compound from 37.39, which how that is in that manner. So we have how, or in that manner. Also, okay, so in that manner, also. In that manner also. In that manner also what? That everyone else is deceived by these false messiahs and false prophets. If in that manner. Okay, if. Now I did trace if back. If. Go, there's a couple different words for if. Some of them are used more than others. If. If. Whether. That. In that manner also. If. If possible. So we see this word possible, and when we trace back possible, 
it, it does go back to a couple different words in the Hebrew. I think it may go to some in one instance and some in another instance. Either way, they're not led astray. So here we have, if possible, it's the Greek 1415, powerful or capable, literally or figuratively, neuterally possible, in that manner if the chosen ones weren't capable. That's how this should read. Goes to Psalm 112 too. His seed shall be mighty, there's our word, upon the earth, powerful, capable. His seed shall be powerful, capable, upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Where are these upright going? That word upright happens to be in the remnant root line, happens to be the ones that are straight. If you're walking a straight path, you're not deceived. It also goes to Psalm 89, 19. Then thou spakest in vision to the, thy Holy One and said, saidest, <laughs> we digest that from the King James. I have laid help upon one that is mighty. I have exalted one chosen out of the people. Again, we have the word mighty. So in both instances, it goes back to the H1368 in context with this with these verses. So, H1368 is Gibor. It's an intensive from the same as 1397, powerful, capable. By implication, warrior, or it can be a tyrant. We see it in the ancient Hebrew lexicon at 2052 EC. Strong, capable, powerful. Up at the 2052, we see from right to left, it's the gam, the bait, and the resh. The action is prevail, the concrete is warrior. Do you suppose these elect ones are prevailing warriors? One of great strength, a warrior, or authority, a master. It comes from the bait resh. Now down here, this is from an old video I did from it's here on this channel. It's called the Family of Heads, where we run, we go through the whole root line. If it were possible, we have a gam. It's a foot. Gather, walk, carry, reward, lift up, pride, yod. It's an outstretched arm or a hand. Work, worship, and throw. The bait, which is the house, the tent, floor plan, the family, or in. The wa, the ua. The tent peg, add, secure, hook, join, and pierce. The resh, which is the head, the head of man. First top, beginning, think. If it were possible. If the adversary were strong enough to change our walk from that of following the fullness of the word to change the work yod we do and how we worship according to the fullness of the word to keep us from the truth of the tent floor plan, the bait, which secures us, hua, a place under the head of man. Because we are looking at false messiahs and false prophets. He is not, if we are so familiar with the truth that when a counterfeit looms on the horizon, we're going to recognize it immediately. We are going to know this is not anointed. We are going to know this is not the seed that was originally planted and that should be allowed to be planted inside of us because we are capable, we are powerful, we are strong. Are we overcomers in the true Messiah or not? Because if you're not, then you're deceived and you're going to continue to be deceived. So, we set up here, this comes from the, uh, can't get into it, uh, must have done it different. It's a bait resh. You can see it right here, the bait, I hope so, and the resh. That's where it comes from. So what is the bait resh? <coughs> we'll just go to the 1043 there. The action is to feed the concrete as grain. The pictograph of bait is a picture of a tent. 
but also represents the family which resides inside the tent. You're not inside the tent if you're, if you're deceived. The resh is a picture of the head. Combined, these have the meaning of family of heads. The plant families of grain, such as wheat and barley, those are two resurrections, have a cluster of seeds at the top of the stalk called heads. These grains were used for food for both man and livestock. Okay, and this is where we get, um, you can see it at the end root line there. We have grain, we have soap, we have clean, the cleanliness from soap. Also pure as a moral cleanliness. This is where we get the word for our pure language. This is where we get the word for, in the beginning, Yahuwah created. Barar is all in this root line. We're either in the family of heads, because we have the strength of the prevailing warrior. Therefore, we cannot be deceived, or we have been overcome, instead of being overcomers in the family of heads. We have not started out with the seed, and then a sprout, and then a stalk, and then become a full head that's ready for the harvest if we are deceived. We looked at this where we traced our word back to. Psalm 112 verse 1. Praise Yah. Blessed is the man who fears Yahuwah, who has greatly delighted in his commands. First thing, follow the commands. And have the testimony of Yahuwah who came to rescue you. Mighty in the earth, shall be his seed mighty in the earth warriors in the family of heads on this earth shall be his seed the generation of the straight ones shall be blessed wealth and riches are in his house and his righteousness is standing forever because they will be in the first resurrection because they were of the family of heads that were ready for the harvest at the time of the first resurrection. <clears throat> revelation 12 9. So some people are going to say, well, what about this verse? Let's read it. And the great dragon was thrown out, the serpent of old called the devil, and Hasatan, who leads all the world astray. He was thrown to the earth, and his messengers were thrown out with him. Okay, there they are. Can we overcome them? I'm an overcomer in Messiah, are you? But it says he leads all the world astray. So we look at this word all, and does all always mean all? If we go back and we think about in the times of Noah, it said he was going to, Yahuwah said he was going to destroy all that had breath. Noah lived, his family lived, the animals lived, they all had breath. So what's up? All of a certain group that are not overcomers, that are not prevailing warriors in the family of heads, will be led astray by false messiah and false prophets. I can have all the apples, but I might not have all the fruit. So I've got all of this certain group of fruit. Maybe I should, maybe the rotten apples. How about that? But I might not necessarily have all the fruit. I might have all the fruit, but not have any of the apples. They might be good fruit. All doesn't always mean all. Isaiah 10, 20 to 23. And in that day it shall be that the remnant of Yisrael and those who have escaped of the house of Jacob never again lean upon him who defeated them, but shall lean upon Yahuwah, the set-apart one of Yisrael. In truth, a remnant shall return, the remnant of Jacob, to the mighty El. Not if they're deceived, not if they're not overcomers, not if they're not warriors in the family of heads. For though your people, O Yisrael, be as the sand of the sea, yet a remnant of them shall return. 
a decisive end overflowing with righteousness. <laughs> it's beautiful behind that. For the Master Yahuwah of hosts is making a complete end as decided in the midst of the earth. Are we tame for the yoke to be the bride? Are we warriors in the family of heads? Are we going to return? Or are we deceived? Mark 4, 26 to 29. And he said, And he said, The reign of Eloah is as when a man scatters seed on the ground, then sleeps by night and rises by day while the seed sprouts and grows. He himself does not know how, for the soil yields crops by itself, first the blade, then the head, after that the completed grain in the head. And when the crop is ready, immediately he puts in the sickle, because the harvest has come. These are mature grains ready for the harvest. They are not deceived. They do not have b insects. They do not have fungus. They do not have disease. They are ready for the harvest at the right time when they're all grown up and ready. Genesis 6, 1 to 8. Hmm. Well, all right. And it came to be when men began to increase on the face of the earth and daughters were born to them that the sons of Eloah saw the daughters of men, that they were Tob, and they took wives for themselves of all whom they chose. And Jehuah said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever in his going astray. He is flesh, and his days shall be one hundred and twenty years. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days, and also afterward. When the sons of Eloah came into the daughters of men, and they bore children to them, those were the mighty men who were of old, the men of name. And Yahuwah saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every inclination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And Yahuwah was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. And Yahuwah said, I am going to wipe off man whom I have created from the face of the ground, both man and beast, creeping, and birds of the Shemaim, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found favor in the eyes of Yahuwah. Here we have our example that said he is going to wipe off man who he's created from the face of the ground, both man and beast. Somewhere in here he says all that have, that have breath. But over here in verse 4, Genesis 6, verse 4. Mighty men. Here's our word again. These are mighty men. Do you think they're warriors in the family of heads for Yahuwah? Or do you think they're evil that we read about? Do you think they're tyrants? There's two groups of people. Those that would be warriors under Yahuwah in the family of heads. That have him as their head. That become full grown mature stalks. Ready for the harvest. But we also have tyrants. Do we see that today? They are not of Yahuwah. Are you, we deceived? one from the other? Can we not tell the difference? Come on. Deuteronomy 10, 17.
For I, Yahuwah, your Eloah, for Yahuwah, your Eloah, is Eloah of mighty ones, the master of masters, the great El, mighty and awesome, who shows no partiality or takes no bribe. Let's go to Deuteronomy 10, 17. Oh, we don't want that. That's for something else. For Yahuwah, your Eloah, is Eloah of Eloahs. The mighty ones of mighty ones, a great Eloah, a mighty. He is mighty. Who is our lead? Our Yahuwah Zevaot. Who is the leaders of the armies and the warriors? That are underneath him. He is mighty. Therefore, we are mighty in the family of heads. Why? Because the seed that's been planted in us that grows up to be a good mature stalk of wheat are overcomers. And he is our lead. Psalm 37, 23 to 40. The steps of man are ordered by Yahuwah. And the ones that are not deceived, the ones that are not led astray, have their steps ordered in such a way to be prevailing warriors. By who? By Yahuwah. Who is the quote unquote warrior leading the armies? And he delights in his way. Though he falls, he is not cast down. Do we sin? Do we fall? Of course we do. Does that mean we're not overcomers? Of course not. A righteous man falls seven times and he gets back up. For Yahuwah is supporting his hand. I have been young and now I am old. Yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. All day long he is showing favor and lending, and his seed is for a blessing. If we're deceived, how could we possibly be a blessing? Turn away from evil, Ra'ah, and do Tob. Those who are doing Tob, truly Tob under Yahuwah, they're not deceived. Turn away from Ra'ah. Evil. Being led astray. Dysfunction. And dwell forever. Why? Because you didn't take the mark. You were not deceived. You did not believe false messiahs and false prophets. You get to dwell forever. Where? Where do you want to dwell forever? In the earth? Because you're not going to the Shemaim. With Yahuwah? Of course. For Yahuwah loves right ruling and does not forsake his lovingly committed ones. They shall be guarded forever. Why? But the seed of wrongdoers is cut off. Because they're not in the family of heads. They were not mature completed stalks of wheat ready for the harvest. First or second resurrection. The righteous shall inherit the earth and dwell in it forever. The mouth of the righteous speaks wisdom because he's a mature head and his tongue talks of right ruling because he's a prevailing warrior. The tarot of his aloha is in his heart because the seed that's been planted in there has grown up to a full mature stalk. His steps do not slide. The wrong one is watching for the righteous. 
and is seeking to slay him. They, and what do the righteous do? They are so familiar with the truth that when the counterfeit looms on the horizon to slay them, they recognize him immediately because they will not be led astray. Yahuwah does not leave him in his hand or let him be declared wrong when he is judged. Wait on Yahuwah and guard his way. And he shall exalt you to inherit the earth. When the wrongdoers are cut off, you shall see it. Bundled these grains shall be, and thrown into the fire these stalks. Not so the family of heads, because they are powerful, they are capable. They were not deceived, because it's not possible. If you truly have the seed of Messiah planted in you and that's what runs through you, you're going to recognize the counterfeit immediately. I have seen the wrongdoer in great power. I think Noah saw it. They were tyrants. And spreading himself like a native green tree. Yet he passed away and see, he was not. And I sought him, but he was not found. Watch the perfect and observe the straight. For the latter end of each is peace. But the transgressor shall be destroyed together. The latter end of the wrong shall be cut off. They shall be bundled up and thrown into the fire. But the deliverance of the righteous is from Yahuwah. Their strength in time of distress and Yahuwah does help them and deliver them he delivers them from wrongdoers and saves them because they took refuge in <coughs> him not a false messiah not a false prophet but they recognized him and his voice and his commands and his testimony and all that he's created around us and how it works, or should work, in harmony for Yahuwah. These are not deceived, led astray by the strong delusion. Is the delusion strong? Look around. It's everywhere. It's always been everywhere. We're in a whole nother day and age. So, let's read it again. For false messiahs. This is the messiah. That is the messiah. There is the messiah. Go over here. This is what he looks like. That is what he looks like. And false prophets who are planting this false seed of this false messiah shall arise. And they shall show great signs and wonders. We're going to see some of that on a physical level. We've actually seen some. We may not recognize it. So as to lead astray. To deceive. If that were possible. If. These ones were not prevailing warriors in the family of heads. These are the chosen ones. They're not led astray. We've been forewarned. We can either take refuge in Him and Him alone. Recognize the counterfeit when it looms on the horizon because the seed that has been planted in us, we're allowing it to grow and mature into a full, completed stalk of wheat ready for the harvest. Hallelujah, Father. Father, let us realize, Yahuwah, that you have a remnant. You're, O ye little flock, and O ye small remnant. And that is true, because that's what your word says. Father, I ask, Yahuwah, 
that you can rem- you can that you do remove the blinders from the eyes of those who cannot see father that we would recognize the counterfeit immediately and take our refuge in you and you alone hallelujah thank you father hallelujah